Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. First female Chief Justice of the OECS Supreme Court talks of her most pivotal achievement. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 20th July, 2022. Details when we return. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Welcome back. Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Dame Janice Pereira, says the launch of the Family Division of the High Court in Antigua and Barbuda is among the seminal achievements of her tenure so far. Jamie J. Roger of ABS News reports. Her ladyship, the Honorable Dame Janice M. Pereira, is the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court's first female and one of its longest serving Chief Justices. With this year marking 10 years in the position, the Chief Justice says launching the court's e-litigation portal in 2018 has so far been one of the most pivotal achievements of her tenure. One of the dreams I've always had for the court was because we are a regional court, we are spread across nine island states, it was important to have those courts electronically linked. And I kept thinking, we must be able to do better than moving around with all of the paper and filings and really having the space a barrier. Why should it be a barrier? She says it gives her great joy to see the nine jurisdictions linked with people being able to file documents regardless of where they are. Meanwhile, Dame Janice also ranks the court's introduction of its sentencing guidelines high on her achievements list. What is important, I think, in terms of the guidelines is you are basically following a structured approach, a stepped approach from step one to step six. And you can explain how you've gotten from each stage to the last stage. The guidelines create a uniformed approach for judicial officers when handing down their sentences. Another major achievement in the Chief Justice's efforts for a more efficient court is last week's launch of the High Court Family Division in Antigua and Barbuda. The whole focus is really that you want to ensure that you are delivering justice in a way that recognizes the dignity of children, the sensitivity of dealing with matters pertaining to children and women, um, vulnerable women, and also the youth, men, and so on. She says the new division will resolve matters in a timely and family-oriented manner. Ultimately, Dame Janice's vision for the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court is an efficient, paperless system powered by technology. To achieve this, the Chief Justice acknowledges the court will need a more dedicated funding source to address current challenges which includes inadequate courthouses in some of the jurisdictions. Jamie J. Boucher, ABS News. In other news, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago says that he has received a new report regarding allegations involving the issuance of firearms users' licenses by the Firearms Unit of the Police Service. And he says it makes very disturbing reading. The allegations were first reported by the Sunday Express and has led to three probes. The Prime Minister says he will forward the report he has received to the Police Service Commission and the Acting Police Commissioner. Jewel Brown of TV6 News has more. In responding to a question as to what assurances the government can give to the public regarding the ongoing increase in violent criminal activity in Trinidad and Tobago, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley made this revelation. Well, the assurance is that we are still maintaining the resources and the endeavor of the, the policemen and women who go out there every day and every night. We have a serious criminal elements in our country, very well armed, very well supported. And by the way, having said that, I should tell you, I have just received the report 
of the examination of the firearms unit of the police service, which was being done by a group of persons that you were told about before. And that report makes very disturbing reading. TV6 News understands that this is the third report into allegations involving the issuance of firearms users' licenses during the tenure of Gary Griffith as police commissioner. Notwithstanding the best efforts of some of my de deranged parliamentary colleagues, I intend to send that report even before I finish reading it. I'm going to send it to the Police Service Commission and then let the chips fall where they may. There's an executive summary of it. It will be laid in the parliament as soon as the parliament is open. The executive summary. But um, that, that um, all components of it will go to the Police Service Commission. The parliament is presently on its July-August recess and is due to reconvene sometime in September unless there's an extraordinary meeting. If there's anything that you've read thus far that you can reveal in any form or fashion concerning what you found. I don't intend to treat with the report in any piecemeal fashion like that. It will be laid in the parliament. It will go to the police service commission. It will go to the police commissioner. And what we have done is identify the nature of the problem. And I, as I said to you, there are serious problems in there. On Monday evening, a source sent a copy of a letter written to the chairman of the Police Service Commission by attorney at law, Larry Lala, on behalf of former Police Commissioner Griffith. In his letter, Mr. Lala claims that in a letter dated May 19th of this year, the Police Service Commission communicated its decision to refuse to provide Mr. Griffith with a copy of the report prepared by retired Justice Stanley John on the instruction of the immediate past Police Service Commission in allegations regarding the issuance of firearms users' licenses. Mr. Lala also wrote that the chairman of the commission is well aware that Mr. Griffith has applied to be considered for the appointment to the post of police commissioner. On October 16th of last year, Prime Minister Rowley said he had written directly to the Police Service Commission three times and highlighted one letter in particular indicating that as the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, he had lost confidence in then Police Commissioner Griffith. Once the Police Service Commission submits its order of merit list to the President, the President shall then send that list to the Parliament. By the government's majority, um, it has to be approved by Parliament. So if Mr. Griffith's name were to be... On Why are you talking to me about Gary Griffith? We have 1.4 million citizens. The work of the commission applies to 1.4 million citizens. I have no idea who the commission will recommend to the parliament. And I have no idea at this point in time how the parliamentary decisions will go. As for the overall war on crime, the Prime Minister said an interministerial team has been established to find a way forward on the government's concern that violent crime should be treated as a public health issue. The objective here is to enter the youth population at various levels and to begin a line of education which should steer people away from participation, or being desensitized by crime and criminal activity. We believe that if we do that effectively, we would begin to generate a wave of people who will reject crime or be in a position to respond to it from the personal, through the home, through the school, into the wider community. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Prime Minister Keith Rowley on Monday also said the last request for proposal for the Pointer Pier refinery is on its last legs and that also at this time the discussion between Trinidad Petroleum Holding Limited and the preferred bidder don't appear to be very promising. He made the announcement in response to a question from TV6's political editor Jewel Brown during a news conference on Monday last where he stipulated that there is a key requirement for a successful bid for the refinery. This, as the government is increasing its support of the fuel subsidy. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley sought to make his administration's position clear that it did not remove the fuel subsidy when it increased the prices of super and premium gasoline by $1 per litre and diesel by $0.50 cents per litre on April 19th. 
what we have allocated for support on the fuel price side is $300 million a month. Multiply that by 12. That is $3.6 billion for the year. Yet you will hear the mischievous or the misinformed saying that the government has removed the fuel subsidy and has thrown the population to the wolves. That is not true. The Prime Minister then spoke about what he said was the $5.5 billion remaining out of additional revenue to Trinidad and Tobago before announcing that the Cabinet decided how much of that will be diverted to the fuel subsidy. And we think that a billion dollars for that is a reasonable amount out of what we have and is earning. And if the price moves above that, the user will pick up that difference. And if the price moves below it, then we all benefit. TV6 News has sought some clarification from the Prime Minister about this, as Trinidad and Tobago has been importing gasoline, diesel, and aviation fuel at international market prices since the closure of the state-owned oil refinery in late 2018 when Trinidad Petroleum Holdings Limited, TPHL, replaced Petrotrin as the state-owned oil company. There are two things you need to add when you talk about the refinery. One, the refinery refines something. The refinery refines crude oil. We, with an operating refinery, at the time of closure, we were importing 120,000 barrels per day. The Prime Minister said the imported crude oil was not being paid for in TT dollars, as he referenced TPHL's subsidiary, Heritage Petroleum Company Limited. And if you say that, well, we do have in Trinidad and Tobago 60,000 barrels at, at Heritage, question asked yourself, what is happening with that? If that had gone into the refinery, it is to lose on refining, what well, I just told you, between 5 and $15 a barrel. It's a US dollar, eh? But to sell it as crude oil, we are making a handsome profit. He said the oil sold by Heritage was fetching a price close to that of Brent crude oil, which traded on Monday at just around US $105 per barrel. No. We have been saying we make the refinery available more than once to any person or entity who has the ability to supply its own oil and need the equipment to refine. So far, we have been unable to do so. Dr. Rowley then made reference to the preferred bidder that TPHL had been in talks with for the refinery. As I speak to you now, the last... Um, Going out, the last um, request for proposal is on its last legs, meaning they got to the point of dealing with one company that seemed to have had some interest and some ability to do what they say they will do. Those discussions, unfortunately, have not yet been concluded and also don't appear at this time to be very promising. On May 29th, in response to concerns raised by the opposition, Energy Minister Stuart Young said U.S.-based Quantan LLC had been engaged in the RFP process for the refinery. On Monday, the Prime Minister did not name the preferred bidder for the refinery, but said if the facility is to be used by any person or entity who approaches the government with terms that it can accept, then it would be considered. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. The United Nations Human Rights Office has expressed concern about rising violence in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. There is an uh, attempt by uh, some parties uh, connected with uh, humanitarian relief to discuss uh, with the gang's access to the hardest hit part of Cité Soleil. However, it's not been, um, it's not moving, it's not been moving uh, very fast. And uh, these issues are still um, on, uh, 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 on a battlefront is still going on between the, the warring gangs in Cité Soleil. So uh, the people cannot get out, they cannot come in, and relief is not, uh, is not available for the people inside Cité Soleil right now. And uh, there's no water, there's no food, 
And in order to get out, you have to go through uh, both uh, battling gangs. And uh, it's, not, uh, it's not an option right now for the people in, in the area. Hubbard's multi-department Mount Gay and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.